Will the Dallas Cowboys get their first road playoff victory in two decades? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode of Locked On Cowboys is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players and they score more or less than their prize pick projection. You can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That is prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. He is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, the playoffs are here. Uh, we've got a game tonight. How are you feeling, buddy? Um, you know, uh, I don't know. I, 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 the, the ants are crawling over my body. The uh, My hands are sweating. Uh, my uh, I'm twitching. Uh, I'm, there, I, I'm excited. I, I'm actually not. As nervous as I thought I was going to be, um, but I but I am very strongly into. I, once the game started being played uh, on Saturday, uh, I, I, my my hands my palms started to sweat a little bit. Uh, but but I'm I'm excited. I'm re- I'm ready to watch this game. I'm certainly ready for Cowboys to get a win tonight and advance yes. to the next round of the playoffs. So let's hopefully see that. Yes, Cowboys Bucks tonight, Monday Night Football on ESPN. Uh, let's talk about the Tampa Bay offense against the Cowboys defense because that's really yeah. the big matchup in this one. Uh, Tampa Bay got some good news on Monday. Ryan Jensen, their Pro Bowl center, activated. He will start this week. He has not played a game yet this season. My first question to you is. How big of a jolt does it give this offensive line? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, having his mind in the middle is going to be helpful. I think. Um, I, you know, I was thinking about this before we got we got on the show, like how tough it must be to not play a single game the entire regular season, and then just try to jump into the middle of playoff football. I mean, I know Ryan Jensen's a vet, but that's still a really tall order. So. Uh, I, I think it's 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 going to be uh, a benefit to them uh, to be sh- sure, uh, but I I, I mean I, I really I, I have to think the Tampa Bay's got to be a little bit nervous about it too. I mean seriously, not having taken an entire snap this season, and then on top of that, you know we're not sure exactly who's going to be playing left guard for them. I, I you know I think Nick Lever it may end up being out, uh, so we'll we'll see if it's H- H- Haney can play there. But uh, I think Robert Haynes, he has a uh, he was Haynes starting at center for them. Yeah, he's got a hamstring injury. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if it's Luke Kadecki, the rookie that plays left mm. guard. And then they keep kind of he Haynes as that win. backup just in case um, Jensen, Jensen can't hurts. Yeah, because yeah, if Jensen's just not ready, like if it's just clear that he's hurt out there, I wouldn't be yeah, surprised I, if that's where they go. I wonder. I mean, I'm assuming he got a, a week of practice and everything, but still, it's like. That's that's a tall order to come back from a, a season long injury and then start your first game. In, in, in I think they wanted him back though because he helps the run game. Like he's such Absolutely. a better run blocker, and maybe that's why they're rushing him back. But I don't know. It's just it's another unknown in this game. It, it to me it feels like Tampa's really going to try to establish the run in this game. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think that they feel like it did, that, you know, it did wonders for them last time. I mean, they didn't score a ton of points, but at least they were able to kind of keep the, the control of the, the game at some points. But um, yeah, I, 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 I invite them to. I, honestly, I think this is a much better run defense than it was in Week One, so uh, that might play right more right into our hands, honestly, a little bit. So um, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how Jensen performs and whoever's in at yep. left guard, whether it's Gadecki or. or or Hainsey and, and how they're able to play. Uh, we should also talk about the Cowboys defense in this one. Uh, no yeah. Trayvon Mullen. He's been ruled out with an illness. We really don't know who's going to be <laughs> the other outside starting cornerback tonight. I, I've, I've got a feeling it'll probably be nation right to open the game, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of Xavier, uh, uh, no. Xavier Rhodes. Um, let me ask you this. How do you think Dan Quinn is going to try to combat the short, quick passes in this game do you think they're going to let them do that in order to take away the big plays or do you think we'll see you know more 
corners up at the line of scrimmage, more safeties at the line of scrimmage. What do you think? I think they'll mix it up a little bit. I I, I thought it was funny that you said Trayvon Mullen got Trayvon Mullen got ruled out due to illness. It feels like he got kind of ruled out due to his play. Um, it feels but, like one of those things like, hey, we're just not sure what our cornerback depth is going to look like the rest of the playoffs if we make it, but we know we don't want you playing right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I listen, I, I think that they'll probably mix it up a little bit. I mean, I, I do think that there is some uh, prudence to the idea of kind of keeping it all in front of you and just making solid tackles. It seems like from watching the Bucks that their game plan is to get the ball to their playmakers and not necessarily in complicated situations and just hope that they break tackles. And, and that hasn't always been super successful for them. So um, I think for the Cowboys, you know, you just, you know, I think with Diggs, you're, you're going to figure out where you want him and then kind of maybe on any given play, either you know, it'll be interesting to see if, if they keep him on his side or if they travel him a little bit with, with folks and then I, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw him kind of match up with with alternating choices between Evans and Godwin just on on any given snap. Uh, but I do think the Cowboys would be kind of beneficial to kind of try to keep it all in front of them. Where the Cowboys are going to get in trouble is if they start getting deep passes thrown on them. Um, and, and so I think that if the Cowboys can keep it all in front of them, rally to tackle, and then on the deep passes, just you know hope that their, their pass rush can get home and, and make Brady uncomfortable – uh, then, then that, I think that's a pretty good success for winning the game. I would love to see Dan Quinn blitz a lot in this game. Like I know Brady is, is so good against the blitz, but there's just no playmaking anymore, right? Not that there ever really was, but if you can get a guy free, you know, a free release at Brady, he'll throw the ball out of bounds. He'll spike it underneath. I, I just want to hit Brady as much as possible, make him feel uncomfortable. And truthfully, I know this is probably going to come back to haunt me, but. I'm not super afraid of their guys after the catch. Like that's just never been no. Mike Evans's game. Godwin is pretty good at it. like Godwin isn't the Debo Samuel, but what he is is he's strong, right? Yeah. But I can live with a five yard pass going for 15 yards every once in a while if it results in the third down sacks and throwaways and all that kind of stuff. So I, I just would like to see the Cowboys go out if they're going to lose this game, go out and be aggressive. Don't let Brady just kind of pick you apart all the way down the field and convert you know, in the red zone. Don't, don't let that happen. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely agree that they need to get after Brady and, and, and make medium to long passes, just not comfortable. You know, just like if you, if you're going to throw the football, uh, we want you throwing it immediately. As soon as you get the snap, you know, and, and, and there's nothing you can, the Cowboys can do to prevent him from throwing the football as soon as he gets snapped to him. But if they rally to tackle uh, and they keep those kind of short passes to short gains, eventually Tom's going to have to drop back a little bit further. He's going to have to hold on to the little the ball a little bit more, and that's what the Cowboys can start to yep. tee off and really get aggressive with him and, and, and hit him and uh, get hands on the football and that sort of thing. So uh, I think they have to they have to stop the, that first aspect. Though. Have they to. have to stop the quick passing game. They have to stop the screen game, that sort of thing. And they just can't let Tampa Bay be super efficient on offense. Like If they're going to run the ball, it's fine. Don't give up five- and six-yard runs on first down. If they're going to throw the ball – because what you know that's going to happen is Brady's going to catch a snap and shotgun, throw yep. it sideways, and they they want Godwin to you know turn it into an eight yard gain to get them to second short. Don't let Tampa Bay do that kind of stuff, and they're going to be fine. Let's uh let's talk about the Cowboys offense against this Bucks defense, Landon. But before we do that, I want to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by Pi- Prize Picks. All you have to do is pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Pick projection. You can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. That includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. They're currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. Just download the Price Pick app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up to play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That means if you deposit $100, they'll give you $100. You deposit $50, they'll give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. I want to let you know that this show is sponsored by Better Help Therapy Online. 
Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and help you learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour to the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere 100% online. Everyone deserves to feel their best. BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists, all available 100% online. That means no waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash locked on. That is BetterHelp.com slash locked on. All right, Lynn, Cowboys offense against Tampa Bay's defense. How confident are you feeling about them in this game after only scoring, was that three points in week one? I certainly feel a lot more confident than than you know, the score indicates in that week one game. I just think that this is a better offense than it was then. Uh, you know, they have kind of figured things out a little bit more. That obviously things have been reconfigured La- last week, notwithstanding. I, I do think that this is a, a group that uh, has some ability to move the football on a, a team like this. There are some disadvantages that the Cowboys can take, uh, can compress, uh, including Lamb in the slot. Um, I don't know that this is still the same kind of run defense that it was earlier in the season. Um, you know, I think it's just so hard to tell because, like. They have Vita Vea and they have Akeem Hicks. When those guys are healthy, they're really hard to run on. It's just they haven't really been healthy for, for a while. Guys? Yeah, it, 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 I mean, it'll be interesting to see. They didn't get a ton of snaps last week. They were able to kind of rest the, the, these guys a little bit near the end of the game. So it'll be interesting to see exactly you know what we get from them. I do know that that the the other big thing that you know that is huge difference is Shaq Barrett. Obviously, we talked about that and, and the effect in the pass yep. rush game, but I also think that his ability as a two way player is something that's underrated, and, and I think that's something that, that the Bucks are going to miss because the Cowboys, I feel certain, will definitely try to run the football at Anthony Nelson and, and especially try on uh, Sharink Shayinka. Mm-hmm. Because you know, he's a little bit undersized. He is a nice little pass rusher, but I think that there is some uh, some size advantage there. So I would look for the Cowboys to kind of get the ball on the edge, and especially considering the fact that you've got a secondary that's a little bit beat up. You got a couple different guys in that secondary, including a safety with shoulder injuries. Test test the run game on the edges. See how willing these guys are to make tackles, uh, and and make sure that this is kind of a continually physical game. Uh, as as well as as you know uh, a game of matchups and and in uh, trying to scheme guys open because I think that will have a positive effect in your ability to get open. This needs to be a big Tony Pollard game for me. Like he's he's the guy that can make this defense pay with his quickness and his speed. He's only had sixteen carries since Christmas Eve. Like it's it's pretty clear the Cowboys have been trying to limit his touches, kind of getting ready for the playoffs. This feels like a game where he needs to touch the ball early and often because he is the one guy where you could swing him the ball you know, on the outside and have him take it 30 yards. Or he hits a seam and boom, he's gone for a touchdown. It just feels like this needs to be a big, big Pollard night. Yeah, I mean, I think they've clearly been saving him to kind of get him ready for this situation. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think using Pollard as kind of almost a constraint against uh, the passing game as well, like as an outlet that can obviously big yes. create big plays runs to the edge you know like i think like we talked about where you can let your offensive lineman get physical and then pollard can get out there quickly and then suddenly it's about uh pollard beating uh Vontae david and, and white in the in the alley with a move here or there to try to gain yardage uh i think these are all you know positive uh, uh plays for the cowboys this is positive advantages yeah. i think the cowboys have an advantage here in the kind of seam area too with with schultz if he can get behind these linebackers but, uh, stretch them vertically I was just about to mention, like, to me, it feels like Tampa's going to really try to limit CD in this game. Like they did in week one, right? They're going to throw a lot of defenders at him, give him a lot of attention. It's Schultz that needs to be able to win in the middle of the field. like between And that these backside linebackers. receiver, too. Yeah. You know, that, back, yeah. that backside receiver, especially when they put him in these bunches on, on one side or the other, they need to be able to win these one-on-one matchups. You need T.Y. Hilton to start having a big uh, – you know, p- producing a couple more plays than he has been in these games. Not that he has been underproducing. It's just that he hasn't had a ton of opportunity. 
I, I imagine he will get lots of opportunity in this game. Gallup needs to convert his chances as well. I, I think that this this defense, you know, to me, uh, it's mostly healthy, but it's got it's got a lot of people on the injury on the injury list. Yeah. I think the Cowboys can get physical with them, and then uh, there are matchups that that will make the, the the Bucks kind of chase them all night. Once the Bucks start really blitzing. Uh, as a as a kind of a sense of desperation because they don't have necessarily the pass rush to get after Dak, that's when the real game begins, right? That's when you know the the mind game between Dak and and Bowles will start playing out, and I think that's where hopefully Dallas is able to take way more advantage than they had uh, previously yep. because they have better answers than they did previously. Uh, I'm really curious to see what Calamore's game plan is against Tampa. I, I thought he was phenomenal in Week One of 2021 when they played Tampa, where. They knew that run defense was really good, so they didn't even bother. And it gave them a great chance to win that game. In week one this year, it was a little harder. They were compromised at receiver. Remember, Dennis Houston started week one for the Cowboys yes, at receiver. So they just didn't have the options there. Um, I want to see what Kellen Moore does in this game because Tampa's aggressive, right? They want to come downhill. They want to blitz Devin White. They're going to do some weird things with Vita Vey and Nakeem Hicks lining them up over your tackles to, to, to try to collapse pockets. But what can Kellen Moore do to just get these linebackers and these safeties thinking and not being quite as fast as they need to be? Uh, that's what I'll keep an eye on, especially early in this game. Yeah, and 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 I think the, the key thing is you know misdirection, play action. Levante David's not going to bite on play action a ton, but you will definitely see White make make moves forward towards the, the ball when you when you run some play action. You know, we By talked way, about uh, it a lot. Here's a go cool PFF stat: number yeah. one in the NFL, Devin White is in uh, getting sucked up in play action. He takes the most steps forward of any linebacker in the NFL. Oh, there you go. And I think that that's going to be key. We talked about it, you know, last week how. They, we didn't see very much motion. We didn't see a lot of play action. I think they kind of wanted to save a lot of those looks uh, for this week, obviously, specifically. So hopefully a, a healthy dose of that will uh, kind of open things up in that middle area behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. That's where Lamb and Schultz are really going to eat. Yeah, um, really quickly before we go make predictions. It's also a game the special teams needs to win. Um, mm. Their special teams were, I mean, all around dreadful last week, right? Brian Anger dropped a punt. Uh, and resulted in points. He also had a couple of bad punts. Turpin fumbled a, a punt return. Uh, Brett Maher missed a, 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 was it a short field. Or no, he missed an extra point, right? Their special teams on paper are so much better than Tampa Bay that that should be yeah. a massive advantage for Dallas. Um, Tampa Bay does not have a kicker that can kick beyond 52 yards. Their punter has been very up and down. They've cycled through kick returners like – if the Cowboys can find ways to steal field position and points on special teams, they're going to win this game. Just, Tampa can't overcome their special teams a lot of times. Yeah, the Cowboys uh, have more talent on their team, and it's distributed in kind of odd spots as far as where there's advantages. But one of the spots that they definitely have an advantage is, is special teams, and, and they need to kind of leverage that to – you know, get extra yards here and there to kind of put their offense in better position and put their put the other team's offense, you know, kind of in, in behind the eight ball. You want you want to make Tom Brady force to drive the, the full length of the field. You know that Tom Brady can do yeah. that, but you still have to make him do that. Uh, you cannot give him short fields. And, and at the same time, like Kevontae Turpin, like if they're going to kick the ball into the end zone, just just kneel on it you don't need to try to be over aggressive here too many times early in the season turpin was too aggressive and it resulted in the cowboys having bad field position them getting holdings and all of a sudden you're starting a drive at your own eight yard line like if they're going to give you the 25 yard line to start a drive just take it that yep. those little things are going to make a difference in this game so keep an eye on the special teams kind of you know as that's probably going to be one of the bigger uh difference makers uh let's let's make our Final game predictions before uh, the contest tonight. But before we do that, I want to let you know about the ultimate football GM app. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football fr franchise, then this is the app for you. You're going to be responsible for, for every strategic aspect of your team, such as hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft, as well as all the ups and downs of the season. All of this in a challenging but realistic game world. The Ultimate Football GM app is completely free and playable offline, so you can play on the go and as you want and when you want to. 
Locked On Cowboy listeners will get a 100% free boost of their franchise when using promo code Locked On in the game store. That is Locked On, so make sure you check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app store. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, Landon. Game predictions. Wild card round. What do you think? You know, you and I talked, I guess, uh, like two or three days ago and after one of our shows. And, and I asked you kind of, I was like, how are you, how are you feeling about this? And I think you and I were both uh, surprisingly calm about this. And I, I don't know why, but I, I just, I feel confident that the Cowboys are going to win this game. Uh, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I don't think this is going to be, uh, a huge statement game. I just feel like this is a, a game that they are more ready for than we're letting on. Um, I think the the Washington game caused a lot of panic in folks, uh, but but to me, I, I think that they they understand what the, the 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 assignment is in front of them, and that was part of what was happening in Washington. Uh, and we still have yet to see this team lose two games in a row. And I think that a lot of that because of the fact that this is an incredibly resilient team. And I think they proved that with losing Dak Prescott and, and winning games without him. Obviously, they know how to back, back bounce back. They know how to, to kind of right the ship. So I'm going to pick the Cowboys to win 27 to 21. Uh, I think their field goal kicker is going to miss several field goals. And if I'm calling a play, I, I think – Cowboys win it on a recovered strip sack fumble on Tom Brady uh, 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 trying to sc- go down the field to score a touchdown to win the game. So that's that's my prediction, and I'm uh, I'm sticking to it. 27-21 Cowboys, and uh, we face uh, San Francisco in a short week in San Francisco, but we'll worry about that later. Yeah. What's so weird to me in this game, and I, I know that you're going to know what I'm talking about, is I could very easily see a scenario where Dallas is down 14 nothing in this game. And I wouldn't panic about it like I've panicked about it before because I don't think Tampa Bay has the offense to suddenly take it from 14-0 to 28-0 and have this game be over, right? Like, they're just not built that way. Yeah. At the same time, if Dallas is up 20-3 to in this game and Brady is starting to get hot. That's terrifying. Yeah, that's terrifying. Together, those seem like those things shouldn't be true, but that's exactly the way I feel about this game. So It's like the Vikings-Giants game yesterday. When the Giants got uh, got behind, they turned the ball over to the Vikings. I was like, man, I'm sorry, the Vikings turned the ball over to the Giants. I was like, man, the Giants are playing right into the Vikings' hands, but it didn't turn out that way, did it? The way that I feel about this game, if the Cowboys can survive the first half, and let's say it's it, let's say they go in it, down in the first half, it's 13 10, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Survive the first half, and I think they're going to start playing more relaxed as the game goes on. We saw them against San Fran last year, came out a little tight, right? And it took them about a half before they started to play like themselves. Keep this game close until at least halftime. And then I think, like they've done all season, I think the talent will eventually start to win out. But what I'm nervous about are the miscues, right? Like is Brett Morgan and miss a kick that he normally should make is Tony Pollard going to be trying to do a little bit too much and fumble the ball. Like that's, that's how they lose this game because they're, they are the more talented team. There's no question about it. I agree. Yeah. I think, I think it's about focus. You know, if the Cowboys are focused and can just, do their jobs. Uh, they don't need to press. They don't need no. to, uh, 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 you know, feel like there's extra pressure on here. They just need to go out there and play their game. And if they do go out and execute, uh, you know, as the, as we know that they can, they should win this game. Um, you know, it's. I, I think that there's been times when they've been asked to do too much, and when they are asked to do individually, right? Yeah. When they've been asked to do too much, that's when they struggle. That's when they have to overpress to try to overcompensate for this. They don't need to do that here. No. They just need to go out and execute and play the game the way they can. Uh, and I understand Tom Brady's the the boogeyman, but uh, we've already seen a couple of boogeymans fall so far this uh, this whole kind of end of the game, end of the season series. So uh, it's time for this one to fall too. So Cowboys just go out there and execute. Hopefully we uh, we get to play another day. We've talked all season about how if the Cowboys want to make it to the Super Bowl and be Super Bowl champions, yeah. you can't just try to avoid the hardest road possible. That's right. You know, you can't just sometimes you have to beat the bullies to really get there. And it starts with Tom Brady. 
right? Yep. If you can beat Tom Brady at, on the road, I think they'll have a lot of confidence going to the rest of the playoffs. It's just getting that first win. Uh, last thing I'll say is that we may not feel like this is a Super Bowl team right now, or you may not feel you may not feel like this is a Super Bowl contender. If they beat Tom Brady in Tampa Bay, and then we go to San Francisco and beat San Francisco in, in San Fran, this team's ready to go to the Super Bowl. Well, do you so, know who did that last year? The Rams did the exact know. same thing last year. They beat they beat Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. They played the 49ers in the championship game. And by the time they got to the Super Bowl, they felt like they were a Super Bowl caliber team that could beat anybody. Right. And, and they, they did. did. So we'll see Starts how it goes. Tonight. Starts, Starts tonight. tonight. Rams also played uh, on Monday Night Football last year. Oh, too. that's right. And they went and played a short week. So a lot of, a lot of similarities there. So uh, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'd uh, like to have you guys check out the Locked on NFL podcast. Uh, they're bringing you the local insights you love, the national spotlight with daily conversations on the biggest NFL stories. Locked on NFL, available on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. All the same places that you get the Locked on Cowboys podcast. Landon, are you and I coming back tonight to record a podcast after the game? Uh, we'll see how we feel. Listen, no matter what, we are here for you guys on the other side of this game. No matter what happens, it's not the end. So let's all remember that. Yes. We will We will be here for a soft landing or for a celebration and, and uh, party poppers on the on the other end. Either way. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see I mean, there. otherwise, we're going to be getting ready for San Francisco on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If, if not, we're going to be talking about coaching hires and all that kind of fun stuff. So we'll be here the rest of the way with you. Here we go. Breathe, deep breaths. Uh, Here we go. Follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. Enjoy the game. Hey, you only yeah. get so many playoff games in your That's lifetime. Right. Enjoy it. Uh, we'll see you guys next time.